Thank you so much, Raina. All right, hello, hello, everyone. It is time for another fun workshop here at Michael's um, with Faber Castell as well. My name is Leigh Ralston, also known as Mommy Leigh on the internet. I am super excited, super thrilled to be here um, and to be your teacher, your workshop leader. Um, before we proceed to the class, I wanna take time to thank everyone for registering for this class. Um, and thank you for being here because your time is precious and I know that, but it's always super, I'm always super excited and always super happy to be surrounded with such creative people. Um, thank you for wanting to learn um, because this is what I do and, and I love what I do. So without you guys, I won't be able to do what I'm doing. But today's class will be doing some lettering. I will be using Faber-Castell's Pit Artist Pens. We'll be adding some metallics. So we'll have some shimmering, sparkling lettering today. I have have been doing lettering for the past 10 years and I don't remember a day where I don't practice or letter in my journals and in my notebooks and so for today's class I will be sharing with you some of my tips and tricks that I've learned through the years and I do hope that you'll find this class inspiring and that I hope you will be able to take a lot with you once we're done. So um, I am excited. I hope you guys are excited. I'm gonna scoot over and we're going to the overhead camera. So we'll get this class started. Okay. All right. So I think everybody's in now. I have in here some of my supplies that I'll be using for today. I am going to be using Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. And also I will be using some of their metallics. All right. So I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to get situated and have your supplies ready while I'm reading where everybody is from. My goodness, we have all over the, the country. So we have Seattle, Chicago, Washington, Illinois, California. I am recording live from Northwest Arkansas area. So do I have any neighbors around here? <laughs> Oklahoma, there we go, we have a neighbor. Okay, so I will be using black paper sketch pad. Before we proceed, I just wanna talk a little bit about what we'll be doing today. So we'll be doing some creative lettering. And in this specific class, we'll be using black paper for our lettering pieces. It's always super exciting. Um, you don't see this a whole lot. I don't know why, but it's just super fun to use like black um, paper when it comes to my lettering, especially with metallic pens. Um, you can get this Faber-Castell. This is a black paper sketch pad. It comes with 25 sheets. So we have this. You can also get some journals from Recollection. Also, I love this square black journal from Dilutions from Ranger. You can find this at Michael's as well. I love using this too. This is pretty brand new to me, but I am new to the size of, I think it's an eight by eight and it's, it's really super fun. So you can also have your notebook like this, a journal with just black pages like that. That's what we're using. Um, and then this, I think this is a nine by 12. Yep, it's a nine by 12. Okay. So when it comes to brush lettering, this is something that I know I get a lot of questions like, how did you get to be where you're at now? <laughs> well, like what I said, I've been practicing for the last 10 years and lettering is something that it was new to me and everybody was doing it, you know, all over social media. And I'm like, I thought, once I get the pen that they're using, I thought I'll be able to write that way because come on, it's just ABCs. But um, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> There's a lot of things to learn when using a brush tip. When we're talking about the modern calligraphy, the calligraphy is when you use the old nib, right? Um, the fountain pens. That one is super tricky, but good thing um, pens now 
comes with the brush tip. And using the brush tip, we are able to mimic the look of that old calligraphy style. And the way we can attain that look is it's all about the amount of pressure that you're going to use when you're using your brush pen. Um, we have shared our worksheets with you. You can find it in the chat. This is um, a lettering worksheet that has a lot of great examples of the strokes that you need to learn for the brush lettering, but we'll be going through that as well today. Okay, so like what I said, when we're doing brush lettering, it's all about the pressure. See the thin and the thick line? The pen will not do that by itself. Trust me, I thought when I was beginning as well, I thought when I get the brush pen, that my lettering will look exactly like how it is now. Nope, that's, that was, <laughs> That was not the case. Um, I don't know if we have a lot of time today. I would love to show you some of my old journals so that you, you can see that it's not too late. But that's the thing. We have to practice every day and you really have to spend some time practicing. Okay, so it's all about practice. Let's get that out of the way. No matter how many workshops you attend, if you do not practice, you will not improve. That is my first tip. My second tip is that you would love, you need to really keep a journal with you. Um, a journal doesn't have to be an expensive, you know, um, notebook. It can be just something simple, but choose something that will have a smooth surface. When using a brush tip, you wanna make sure that you're using a smooth paper because you want to make sure that you don't hurt your nib because if you have something that is toothy or there's a lot of texture in your paper, what's going to happen is that you're going to scratch your nib and it's going to be difficult to get the thin and the thick lines. But the good thing with the Pit Artist's brush pens is that you'll be able to pull this one out like this and you can flip it. I actually just flipped this one. So I'm using the brand new tip for this workshop. So basically with the brush pen of the Pit Artist pens, you're getting like two pens and one, super fun. Okay, so practice is the first. Second, keep a journal. Why is it important to keep a journal? It is very important to keep a journal because you want something, you want a reference to look back on. You wanna make sure that you see the progress because without the samples of where you've been, you don't know where you're at right at this moment. If I don't have all my past journals, I won't be able to say, oh, I think I'm improving. Yes, you'll be able to see it, but then it's always super nice to just have that reference of, wow, I, I really improved. And that gives you inspiration and it just motivates you more to keep practicing. I hope that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so when it comes to brush lettering, there are simple things that we're gonna be talking about today before we proceed with the lettering piece that you have in your worksheets. Okay, so brush lettering is all about the upstrokes and the downstrokes. This is a little redundant, but this is very, very important. This is something that it's like, a chorus of a song that you want to keep in your head when you're doing your lettering, especially if you're just beginning. So when you're doing your upstrokes, this means this is your thin lines. So that's the upstroke. When you're doing the downstrokes, this is your thick line. So how can you get the thin and the thick? So when you're doing your upstrokes and when you're trying to get your thin line, this is when you're going to apply really light pressure. And when I say light, think as a feather, it's really, really light. So every time you wanna go up for your upstrokes, you're going to apply really light pressure on your pen. And when you're doing downstroke, every single time you're doing a downward motion, 
or a downstroke, this is when you're going to apply pressure in your pen. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see. Okay, again, so when we're doing upstroke, thin lines and light pressure, thin and light. Upstroke or downward motion. See how much my pen is bending? The brush tip of my pen is bended because this is when I'm applying pressure. And also notice how I'm holding and handling this pen. I am not holding my pen this way. It's not upside down. I'm holding it perpendicularly, kind of like relatively 45 degrees angled so that I can use the body of my brush. Apply your pressure, and then you get your thick stroke. Now I'm going upstroke, so this is where my thin, really light. Now I'm going down, apply your pressure. Even when I'm doing a thin, thin strokes, I have practiced to make sure that my angled is always relatively 45 degrees because even when I do it like this and when I do my downstroke automatically I still have to adjust but when you're writing letters and when you're writing words it's easier when you're already 45 degree angle to the paper all right so again we're doing a thin or an upstroke thick for the downstroke so this is your combination, thin stroke, thick stroke, right? So upstroke is thin and my downstroke is thick. So thin and light pressure. In the beginning, when you're practicing, this is something that you're going to have to repeat over and over again in your head. But the more you practice and the more you do this, you're going to build a muscle memory. And, and this is where practice comes in, because the more you keep repeating the strokes and you're going to find the different strokes that um, we're going to practice here, those are included in the modern brush lettering worksheet that Faber-Castell provided for you guys for today. So let's practice with the upstroke, up, thin, and light, downstroke thick and heavy pressure. Again, my pen is angled. I am not doing it this way because look, if you do it this way, look how much difference of your downstroke is. So if you're going to do this, even when you're bending and even when you're applying pressure, you're not going to get the thick downstroke that you want. It still looks like you're thin. So you want to make sure, very important, to have your pen angled. And if you're a lefty, we get this question a lot. If you're a lefty, really the same principle applies. All you have to do is angle your pen as well. I wish I can practice with you, but I cannot draw for the life of me using my left hand. <laughs> but basically, apply the same rules, but oh, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> but that's the same thing. So thin, light pressure. I'm going to try for you guys. <laughs> so I can feel your pain too. And then <laughs> apply the pressure to get your thick, right? So same principle, but basically you're going, you're, you're just doing a different, different direction because you're a lefty. So I understand the pain. Another tip that I'd like to um, always share is as simple as this one. We are used to when we're writing something, our notebook, our paper, or our journal is straight like this. Like my the way I hold my pen, I like to tip my notebooks and my journals this way, just slightly. I like to tilt them slightly to the left. So if you're a lefty, you want to do it and tilt them slightly to your right. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. All right, so let's just practice a little bit more strokes in here before we proceed. So we have the thin and thick, 
now we can do the overturn. I know it's really boring sometimes to practice just the strokes, but trust me when I say this is really super important to get yourself familiar with these different type of strokes, because this is where you're going to practice the difference of your thin and then to your thick. So for thin, and then I'm going to apply pressure from my thick line. And then that is the overturn. That's this stroke is called overturn. And, and again, you can find this in your worksheet that we have provided for you guys. Now the next one is called underturn. So basically, if you want to keep things simple and it's upside down U. Now the underturn is just a letter U. So when I'm going down, this is my downstroke, I'm applying pressure, and then I'm going really, really thin, right? So downstroke, heavy pressure, upstroke, light pressure. So that is your underturn or just letter U's. Another stroke that you want to practice is called the um, compound curve. So basically kind of like a letter N, So this is a good practice of heavy and then go light, heavy, and then go light again. Another question that I get asked a lot is that I don't, I don't see a difference between my thin and thick. Okay, so the reason why you're probably not getting the difference of your thin and thick is you're probably not applying enough pressure when you're doing your downstrokes, or you're not going light enough when you're doing your upstroke. So really be intentional with your stroke um, because that's the only way you're going to see the difference from the two lines. So like that understroke, so we practice this stroke and then you get that thin and thick. So thin and thick, thin, and thick. Repeat it in your mind over and over until you build that muscle memory. And trust me, you will. Okay, the next one is a combination. It's kind of like the compound curve as well, but this one is kind of like the letter I in small caps. But this is a good stroke to practice as well because you're kind of getting that thin and thick. You stop in there and you apply your pressure and then go up and go up. So what I struggled with in the beginning when I was practicing, I was really struggling with my thin because I write heavy naturally. And so that's one thing to consider as well. So if you have heavy hands, um, then know that you're going to have a difficult time um, creating your thin strokes just because we write heavy naturally. So then be more intentional when it comes to your thin because the thick strokes for you will be, will, will come so natural and easy because you write heavy. So now when I'm writing, when I'm doing my brush lettering, I really slow down when it comes to upstroke because I have to really um, work twice as hard <laughs> because um, I don't have that light hand naturally. So just think that, okay, I write heavy. So, okay, think light, think light, just hold it really light. All right, the next one is an oval. So heavy pressure going down and then light pressure going up when you're creating. Okay, I'm going to zoom in just so you can see. Here we go. So this is called the oval, thick, and then I go kind of like pausing in my mind because I know I have to go light. So if you don't go light enough, this is what's gonna happen. See the difference of this to this, or you don't apply enough pressure and you just do this. But when you apply pressure when you, with your downstroke and go really light with your upstroke, then you can really see the difference from the thin and the thick, all right? Okay, so those are really a good practice 
strokes to start with if you're beginning. Now, if you have been practicing a lot and you still don't see a lot of difference in your lettering, please do consider um, what I've mentioned earlier that maybe you're not applying enough pressure when you're doing your downstroke or you're not going light enough when you're doing your upstrokes. And also make sure to hold your pen angled because we've seen the difference of doing this than doing this. All right? So you don't do this. These are don'ts and this is the do. Really simple little things like this will make a big difference when in your lettering adventure. Okay, so the pit artist, they come in different tips. I do have, see, I use this so much. Um, Krista may be able to help us. I think it's a 2.5 if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then there's a 1.5 tip and then the brush tip and then the chiseled. So they all um, are going to write differently when you're using them. And it's just super fun to have different types of strokes. Because when you're doing creative lettering, guys, I hope you know that you don't have to always just do the brush lettering. Um, you can just still be creative with your lettering without using the brush pen because the brush pen takes a little bit to really get yourself used to using it. And so I love, look at this, look at how opaque the pit artist. I mean, there's other brands where I have to constantly shake the pen to get the white, but the pit artist, you don't have to shake it. You just open your pen and start writing. So when you're using um, a bullet pen like this, this is the 1.5. This is what I love to call, um, when I'm doing a lettering, because when you're using 1.5, that means you're getting very consistent lines. Even when you apply pressure, even when you go light, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get the consistent um, strokes or width of your lines. So start with this one, because if you have seen some of our past workshop, we did that's called a faux lettering. So if you're struggling with the thin and the thick lines, you can always grab the 1.5, which has the, um, um, the 1.5 pen that will give you the perfect line every single time. Um, you can always go to Michael's YouTube channel to find the faux calligraphy workshop that we created. It's super fun. So for example, we're going to do love and you're using the 1.5. Just write it in script as you normally would without having to struggle of your thin and thick lines. Just write love. Okay. So you still want that thin and thick lines. How can you do this? With you in your head knowing that, okay, every single time I do my downstroke, this is my thick line. And every time I go up, this is my thin line. So just kind of repeat it in your mind. Okay, I kind of went down here. So I'm just gonna add a second line and then shade in. So we have the thick line in here. Kind of go over, okay, this was thin because it was upstroke. Now I'm gonna apply pressure. So this should be a thicker line. So just kind of go over that line again and then shade the inside, okay? Just be careful when you're doing it because right now I am not being careful, okay? And then here, I'm gonna go thick again. So I'm gonna apply pressure in here. I'm just gonna add a little bit in there. So see, you can still have that brush calligraphy look without having to struggle using a brush pen. You just have to understand the rules of thin going up and thick going down. So if you have that in your mind, you can create the faux calligraphy without having to use the brush pen. All right. Okay. 
And trust me, yes, I do still kind of go over the line sometimes because, okay, where did I go down and where did I go up? And I think that's one thing that's really important to remember when you're doing something creative or when you're trying to learn something new, always give yourself grace. Always be kind to yourself because I understand the frustration when there's something new that you're wanting to learn and you just don't get it in the beginning. And it's frustrating, I do understand, but give yourself grace and allow practice time. And it's, it's really going to make a big difference. Um, just spend 10, 15 minutes of practicing a day. That's, that's all you need. And just keep going and keep a journal so you kind of see that reference of where you started, you know, and then where you are currently at. And then you see that progress and you're going to really be inspired and motivate yourself without having to compare your work with others that are doing this for so many years now. Okay, so I just want to show you guys just a little bit more example of writing. So you can really see the difference of that thin and thick and that we're going to complete a lettering piece. And then we're gonna talk about the metallic pens as well. Okay, so I'm using the brush pen now. I have my paper tilted to the left. And I want to make sure that my hands will have really control. Um, I want it to not wiggly. I don't want it like this. I want to make sure that this lay flat on the table or on the surface. And then the way I hold my pen is this way. I know we all hold our pens differently. Some hold it this way, some hold it this way. So it doesn't matter how you're holding it, as long as you have enough control over here. And then as long as you are 45 degree, relatively um, slanted from the paper. Okay, so I'm going to write just a couple of words so you can see the difference of the thin. I'm going really light here, okay? And then I'm gonna apply pressure and then go light again. Pressure and then go light again. Because all my videos on, not all, but most of it on Instagram are recorded and it's really sped up. So I don't write that fast, please, just so you know. And so even the videos you watch on YouTube and Pinterest know that I don't think they write that fast as well. So just be intentional with every stroke that you create. Give yourself grace. And with enough practice, we are going to get this. I really love the Faber-Castell pit artist because see how much my brush nib is really, really bended in there, but I can still, it has this bounce um, so that even when I go light and then thick and apply pressure in there, it bounces back. And then I can just apply pressure again and then go really light and for my thin strokes and pressure again. So don't be scared to bend your pens. They're not going to break. You're supposed to do that so you can get your thick strokes, right? And these are some of the strokes that I practice. Even before I started this workshop, I was practicing my work, my, my strokes, because I wanna make sure that I have my, my hand and my mind coordinated to create this beautiful lettering pieces. Okay, so last word that we're going to practice. And then we're going to create a beautiful lettering piece share with you how we can create them and add some accents using the metallic pens from Faber-Castell. All right, here we go. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out. OK, 
Okay, so we have different lettering pieces in here. We also created a workshop for um, with Michaels and Faber Castell about composition when it comes to lettering. So make sure you check that out on um, Michael's YouTube channel. Um, so we have sh shoot for the moon and you'll land among the stars. We can do fly me to the moon or we can do what we created that even the stars need darkness to shine. So we can do that. So with that lettering piece, I used the brush pen and I also used some of the Pit Artist in Gold. These are beautiful. So the Pit Artist, because these are India ink, these are waterproof and also these are light fast, which means they're going to stay vibrant and opaque and saturated for many, many years to come. Um, now, I don't have a whole lot of knowledge about the metallics, but these metallics set a Faber-Castell, they work in plastic, they work in wood. Um, I have created um, some pouches um, using the metallics. I even um, use this on a fabric canvas um, on a tote bag. So these are really, really nice too. So that's just the difference. Um, I'm going to use the Pit Artist today. So we're gonna use the gold and the silver. So it comes in copper, gold, and silver. So today we're going to be using the gold and the silver. Okay, so with the thought in our head, knowing that we're going to do some brush lettering, thin, up, upstroke, thin, light. <laughs> So that's when I was started. That's what I have in my head. Upstroke is thin lines and light pressure. Okay, so if you want to write this down in your notebook, please feel free to do that because we all need some reminders. So your downstroke is your thick line and heavy pressure. Oops, I don't know how to spell heavy. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So when I'm doing a composition or a lettering piece, sometimes I really want love starting um, with just a regular pen or a pencil because this helps me when it comes to my composition. So even the stars, even the stars needs darkness to shine. Write it down in a piece of paper first, because you, you need to analyze the words in your quote. Okay, so this is part of the com um, composing this quote in a lettering piece. So if we wanna do it just exactly how I did it in that lettering um, worksheet, we can do that, but for today, since you have that worksheet to print and practice along at home, let's do something, but you're still using the same quote, but let's letter it in a different way than how I did in that. So even the stars needs darkness to shine. For sure, I want to make highlight this word, and I really think I want to highlight the stars as well. So what we can do is put in the even V on top. So we can, I'm just going to letter it in just regular script. So basically this is when I wanna make sure, okay, my letters will fit in here. Which letters, if you wanna use like accents, like flags, um, banners, that's a great way to highlight um, some of the words that you want to put focus on or where you your eyes would go to automatically. So even the stars. And then you'll also practice your spacing. So knowing that, okay, I started, you know, I have so much space in here. So I could, you know, move my S in here. So this is where using a pencil really helps a lot. So even the stars needs darkness. Maybe we can highlight the darkness as well. 
So that means we can just write this word light or small and smaller size here. And then the darkness, we're going to write it in a script. Also, other than writing heavy, I really write big as well. <laughs> so I always struggle with a smaller um, space. I really love using like nine by twelves um, like this. This is an A5 size. So even the stars needs darkness. So now I have, I wanted to highlight the shine. So how can we highlight the word shine without having to add the two in here and shine here? We can, so these are some of the accents that I love to use when I'm doing lettering pieces, banners, circles, you know, shapes, um, a heart. And then we wanna make sure we write the word shine. I'm going to make this all capital. So we can do something like this, but we're going to use the brush pen and then we're going to do it in a much larger space, All right? I am ready. I think I like that. All right, guys, so look at what we're going to create. So even the stars needs darkness to shine in this. You don't have to use a brush pen. If you don't want to, you can use your 1.5 bullet tips, whichever you have. And we're going to letter. Yeah, I. you know what? I've seen many different ones that says need as well. Um, and then some with the S, but let's do the without the S. Here we go. So even the stars need darkness because this is already plural. All right. So the even the, knowing that I have it all the same width. Right, so I can I have to adjust the letter E in here, make sure that they're kind of inside the rectangular size. It, ne it doesn't always happen for me. Sometimes, even when I have it laid out on in scratch paper <laughs> on the scratch paper, and it's like when I put it in my final page, sometimes it's just always super different. I don't know, maybe it's an an artist thing or something. Okay, so even. And also, I want to share with you, I don't like lettering in capital letter, doing the brush letterings. I don't know, but I hope it's just not me, but it's not my favorite. I think I like the um, small caps. So this is letter V. We're just going to loop it over here. And then the letter E. See what I'm talking about when I write so large? Look at this. We're already on this side. Lordy. Okay, we're just gonna move on. <laughs> thin and then thick again. Thin and thick. Here we go. Okay, even the stars. And then we're gonna do the banner this time. So simple thing to do your banner, you can do what we created here, or we can also do something like this. So just a straight line, try to do two straight lines first and then close it, close it in like this, right? And then you want to add two more lines over there and you repeat the same process, two lines, but you're gonna go over here. Okay, and then we're gonna close this part in, close that part in. Okay, so this corner to this one, we're just going to create a slant diagonal line. There we go. 
So we close that banner. And this time we're just gonna draw a triangle without the bottom or just a letter V. There we go. There we go. So that's another banner that you can use. Very simple. All right, so even the stars. Okay, I don't know if I can write the stars in the very big banner, but we're going to try. See what I did in here? I am drawing it in different again. So just kind of like a wiggly line like this. Like that. And then we're going to draw a letter V to just close it in like that. Right? There we go. And I think this time, instead of using the brush pen for the word stars, I'm just going to use the, um, the bigger white pit artist. And here's a tip. When you have, when you're writing a word and then you have to keep it in one, in a shape, inside a shape, whether it's a circle, a rectangle, a triangle, I always try to use, even when I'm applying stickers too, I do this all the time. So I write the first letter first, okay? And then I write the last letter. And this will help you with your spacing. So I'm going to write my T, my letter A, and then my letter R again. See, if I just started with this, I know I would mess up with my spacing. So using this method by writing the first letter and then the last letter, it always helps me when it comes to the spacing of my letters. All right, so this time we're going to write the word need. We can, since this is a larger space, I think that's why I'm having much more um, idea, just because we have this small space where we created the first draft. And now that I'm in a larger space, my mind is like going many different places. But let's just follow what I did. So this time, I'm not going to use the brush tip again. I'm going to use a 1.5. And then we're going to just add the word need over here. Okay. Since I'm not... Um, inside any shape or anything like that. I don't really have to use that first letter and last letter technique. I can just keep going like this. Here we go. And then we're gonna write the word darkness using the brush pen again. And I think I can Make it fit. I'm just being really intentional with every stroke that I am creating. You don't have to go fast, take as much time as you need. Slow down. There we go. Now, instead of putting the two in here, maybe we can put it here also. But since we have the need, see, this is where when composing, you can just go, you can go back and forth and back and forth, just 
as long as you just slow down and see where the letters are and you have space in here, just play around with the letters. There's no wrong, no right. So we're gonna use, since we have the need over here, I wanna make sure that I have the word two in here. But I don't think I wanna put it in a circle this time. I actually, since I have this big space over here, I can just write the word two in small caps like this. like that. It's really important to see how, you know, some artists create like this, because this is when you're going to understand that something that you see online on the internet is not just created this easy. You know, you really have to be, take your time and just kind of play around and enjoy the process. And Trust me, if I'm using a pencil and a paper, I would have gone through so much paper by just creating um, many different drafts before I create this finished piece over here. So even the stars need darkness to shine. Now I still want the word shine to really shine. So I'm going to write it still in all big letters. So my letter S. All right, letter I. Letter N. And then letter E. There we go. And I always like to remind um, my students too when I'm doing um, workshop like this it doesn't have to be a perfect perfect stroke every single time because remember that you can always go back in like for example I want some of these to be much thicker strokes and I wasn't able to do that um, from my first try so I can just come back in here and then just add more thickness to the areas where I want it to be over here just going to add that line in and then shade everything in. And then this one, I want this to be much thicker. So don't try to get everything perfect from the beginning because that's where frustration and disappointment comes in. Um, when you're creating, I think what matters most is really the process of what you're doing. Um, the process of learning is super important because the final outcome, you can always just trash something if you aren't happy with it, but that the process, the motion and, and your, your um, feeling while you're creating this, sometimes you're, you're gonna notice me really staying so still and quiet because when I'm lettering, I, it just really turns me or transforms me <laughs> um, into something. It's like I turn into this super relaxed individual. I don't, and I have an artist mind. My mind is super busy all the time, but when I'm lettering and when I'm creating something, it really puts me in this Zen mode. And I think that's why I love lettering so much. Here we go. So we were able to add thickness to the areas where we want, want it to be. Okay, so now how can we add more accent to this? Because this already looks super nice to me, but this is where our metallic pens would come in. And this is super fun to do. So I'm going to add, I'm going to use the gold for this one. Now I wanna highlight um, some word like the darkness. It is already super pretty. It's laying where I want it to be. But we can add stars in here first because I feel like we have extra space in here, extra space in here. So this is where we're going to add stars. Okay, so I have following the rules of three. This, so we're just gonna add some stars. 
I saw something on Facebook the other day that we all create, we all draw stars differently. It's, it's super interesting. I thought we just all create it the same way, but I guess we don't. So I kind of go first triangle and then go up and then to the right and then down. <laughs> so I'm so curious, how do you create your stars? So up down to the left to the right and then down again so there so see how we have that oh you're the same way Lillian okay good okay so we have that extra space filled in now I have a little space that I want to fill in here again we're going to we're going to draw much smaller stars this time right Oh, good. I can see you guys. I see your comments. So same way. Here. And then I'm just filling it in. So just how I created my stars when I was in kindergarten, that's still how I create my stars now. <laughs> All right. So we have those. Now I want to highlight the word too. So what I like, what I'm going to do here is just add that stroke. So one line, I'm going to make this one longer and this one just a bit shorter, All right? Like that. And then I'm going to use the silver pen. This is a 251, the Pit Artist. And I'm just going to add dots every, like this here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Basically, we're going to create a frame with all these dots. Don't overthink it, just add those dots. And love using the 1.5 for this because I get this consistent size of dots each and every single time. Because if I were going to use the brush pen in here, whew, it's going to be a little difficult. I'm, I bet you it's going to have different width and size each time we create that. But that's another artistic look. If you like that look, oh, please. Yes, I'm all for it. So, but for this particular piece, I just want to have consistent size of dots. So the 1.5 bullet tip comes in handy. Yee. Love it. Oh, re oh, Candace, I see, I see your comments. So you draw a line first. <laughs> that is super. That's super. Okay. And then I am just going to add a little bit of white all around where I feel like there's some spaces that I can fill in, but Overall, this is our piece for today. I hope that you enjoy this workshop. I really enjoy teaching and sharing some of the tips that I've learned through the years because I know brush lettering or just creative lettering sometimes could be frustrating, but please don't stop practicing because that is where you're going to see the difference and you're going to see improvements the more you do it the more you build that muscle memory it, it's going to come easy next time so easier it gets easier next time but thank you all so much for joining us um in behalf of the faber castell team would like to thank everybody um in behalf of michaels my name is lay ralston i hope that you don't forget to share with us what you created today make it with michaels follow us on social media Faber Castell USA. You can also find me on social media at Mommy Lay. I'd love to connect with you um, and stay in touch. And we hope to see you again for our next class. Have a beautiful evening, everybody. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Um, until next time, stay creative and stay happy. Thanks, everyone.